Hello and welcome to a dark parking lot at a Tesla supercharger, which can only mean, well, and here out of spec, it can mean anything. But today in today's testing video, we are doing a 10% challenge with the new Model Y. This is the new Juniper Model Y, dual motor, long range, basically the current base spec that we can get, although the base model is, I guess, coming, but uh, this is currently the, the cheaper one, the no longer launch edition one, complete with the 84 kilowatt hour-ish battery pack, probably a little bit less, but we're still figuring out what we can pull out of these things on range tests and such. But today's test is more about simulating a road trip. What if you pull up to a charger with about 10%, like many people do, charge for 15 minutes while you're using the facilities or hanging out in the car with climate control on because people would probably hang out in their car. And then you see how far you can get with that 15 minutes of charging. And then you show up to the Dex charger preconditioned at 10% once again. That's basically the synopsis of this test. So I just literally hit 10%. I was sat here with 11% climate control dipped down to 10, which means I'm going to plug in. We're fully preconditioned. We're going to see what this car rips at a V3 supercharger. Sadly, no V3.5 or whatever, um, close enough to the highway to really do a solid test, but that doesn't matter. No one else is really here. So we're not going to see any site wide load sharing or anything like that. So let's plug it in, see what we do with 15 minutes. And of course, kind of the handshake time, but we know what Tesla's handshake times are usually pretty, pretty easy. So we run climate between 68 and 72. We've got fully preconditioned high voltage battery. We've got service mode showing us everything and we are going to get ready to plug in here. Got my trusty phone with a timer. Let's see how it goes. So press the button, which opens that up. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, usually, yep, seven seconds. So start the timer. Let's see how much energy we can pull. So I'm going to keep an eye on this timer throughout the session and we'll keep an eye on our temperatures, our charging speeds. We'll of course report how much energy we charged during the session. At the end of it, we'll see what we end up with state of charge wise, and then we'll go drive it down on the highway at 80 miles an hour. So different than our 70 mile an hour range test. Um, so it'll definitely be a different efficiency number and, you know, not the crazy efficiency of my new model three, for example, but still should see some good efficiency ramping right up there. Max charging speed, 250 kilowatts with climate control on, which is awesome. So that's kind of to be expected. Um, this is not like the GM products I've been testing recently where running climate control absolutely destroys the charging session. <laughs> it does say charge rate limited by charging station, charging at maximum rate available from charging station. Well, that's the maximum rate the car can take as far as I can tell. So I wonder if that's a message given the fact that it's pulling some excess power. Maybe it's requesting excess power for climate. Not really sure. We've already ripped to 14%. Jeez. Um, so we're going to go in here, make sure we don't have a charging limit set because we don't want to stop charging suddenly, but back in here in service mode, we can keep an eye on our voltage and amperage. We're requesting 650 nearly amps, which is crazy. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's so high. Um, uh, that's, that's Tesla things. And we'll see how much our battery and even our pin temperatures, if they do start to climb, we'll keep an eye on it. Um, don't think climate will have to work too hard. We're looking at about 79 degrees ambient temperature right now. It should dip to maybe 70 by the end of the test. So relatively decent ambient temperatures, nothing too cold, nothing crazy hot. Uh, it's really cool by the way, how service mode changes the LEDs to red. I just now realized that already seeing charging dip off of peak there. So it's 225 kilowatts. Uh, down from 19. So we'll see how much we end up with already dumped seven kilowatt hours into the battery. So I'm just leaving the door cracked so that service mode and climate stay on because I don't think you can actually keep climate on with service mode on traditionally speaking. So just have climate control running uh, <laughs> with service mode by keeping the door cracked just a little bit. But that way the, the ambient temperatures and internal temperatures don't mix too much and doesn't run climate more than is fair. Only been three minutes and 20 seconds. That's, I feel like we're going to go a ways. When you look at good numbers for the 10% challenge, you were thinking 150 miles as like a really solid number. If you go even more than that, that's like 
like two hours of driving, which would be about 150, 160 miles, would be crazy good for, I think, 15 minutes of charging. You know, one of the early urban legends of like, oh, EVs will never make it is because of people that are like, oh, you have to charge an hour and then drive an hour. And maybe that was the case in like 2013 for some really ancient EVs, but uh, ancient. Um, in this case, 150 miles would be great. 100 miles would still be solid. And that's what we've seen with the previous generation Model Y, the pre facelift or really whatever you call juniper thing here um, that one i think did about 100 miles and then we've seen up to about 130 miles on a model 3 but not sure what this will do genuinely no idea i'm i don't want a late night but also i want to see this thing rock so i don't know i'm gonna guess 125 just a nice round number fans are ripping trying to keep this thing cool which definitely will eat into the charging power we already dropped below 420 amps very Elon number there. Um, by the way, price is tested about 50 grand on the nose, roughly speaking. Um, of course, depending on incentives, depending on options, but this is basically bare spec, long range, all wheel drive. So not the rear wheel drive base model. That's about 45 grand. This is, uh, yeah, middle, middle of the road. Uh, we'll see the performance come hopefully later this year, which would be pretty spicy and pretty cool. But this one just being the base color, forget the name of the gray. I always forget the names of the grays. I can't keep up, but uh, gray on the base wheels, which are nice and comfortable, proper aero wheels, and uh, white interior, which is, again, properly done. This is our friend Mark's car, so huge shout out to Mark for letting us borrow this for the test. We are 10 minutes in on this 10% challenge, and this thing is just drinking the juice, 47%. So we're going to easily pass 50%, but you know, how Tesla's charge is not crazy good. Imagine if this had like the Kia EV6 charging curve. It'd be just an absolute beast. Um, so instead of that, we have probably, we'll probably peter down to about 100 kilowatts by 50%. So we're already below half of our max charging speed. Um, back here in service mode, we can see down to about under 300 amps. The battery temperature is up to about 58 Celsius. Pin temps are still, yeah, they're not crazy hot. Not as hot as the battery, that's for sure. So, yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. We've already gotten 29 kilowatt hours, so that's pretty cool. And not sure how far fat past 50, but definitely past 50%. And given the range of this car, I think, I think this is going to be a really good number. Maybe even the new best for a Tesla in the 10% challenge. Man, it feels so nice out here. I almost need a jacket and it's middle of July in Colorado. It's, uh, oh, my watch says 69 degrees. Nice. So maybe it is the same exact ambient as it is inside the car. So it's almost like, doesn't even matter that we're running climate. With just over a minute left, we have just now dipped below 100 kilowatts. That would have been crazy awesome if this had held over 100 the entire first 15 minutes which it might have gotten close to if we had plugged in at zero, but true to the test, we plug in right when it hits 10. And uh, we have just under a minute left. Temperatures have settled in on the high 50s Celsius, and we've dropped down to right about 250 amps requested. Pin temperatures are probably, everything's probably about as hot as it'll get. I don't think it'll get that much hotter now that we've come off this far off peak. By the way, we'll be running climate probably at 69, maybe 70, just somewhere between 68 and 72 in its most eco-friendly setting. And in this case, the passenger vent can be turned off and we have rear vents also turned off. Even though this has ventilated seats, which is awesome, we won't be running ventilated or heated seats or a heated steering wheel, anything like that. And we always run in the most efficient setting, which is a chill acceleration. Um, that's pretty much it. There's not really much on here. There's no like eco or eco plus or anything like that. 15 minutes, stop the charge. Oh my gosh. I hate how Tesla hides the actual charging metric there, but we did 36 kilowatt hours. We're gonna take this out of service mode here and yeah, time to drive. We got our trips reset. We are gonna hit the road, get the, to the nearest highway, which is right next to us hit 80 and drive as far as we can. Why are you doing max heating? What the heck? Crazy car. No idea why it went to max heating as I was leaving the charger. If that was a weird glitch or something, but got it fixed back to 69% before or 69 degrees before we even pulled out. So that shouldn't hurt us. 
57% though, that is crazy. I mean, I just tested the Blazer EV recently, which I guess is a competitor to this, and that left the charger with like 37% and it only did 57 miles. This will easily double, if not more, which would be crazy. As seems to always be the case with Tesla's uh, 81 indicated is 80 GPS verified. So we'll be hauling this speed for a while here. And yeah, I'm currently navigating to Fort Collins and I'm still gonna have to go past that, I think, to turn around, which is crazy. So I guess I'll be driving for maybe a couple hours. I'm not really sure. <laughs> I had my good friend Jeremy, who's been helping out with some of our data stuff, um, check on the 10% challenge leaderboard, which I should have done beforehand. But um, yeah, I, I did know some of the Tesla numbers, but I guess the record is the Plaid with 19 inch arrow wheels. That was 133 miles. This could beat it. My Model 3 might beat it. I'm not really sure. I got to do a 10% challenge with my Model 3 next. Um, but this is on track to be probably one of the better ones. Of course, you have Tycon with like 193 miles, which is wild, way up there. And Lucid, uh, th those are also fairly high up there. Oh, apparently my computer has triggered the seatbelt warning. It's in the passenger seat. And somehow my like three pound MacBook has triggered the seatbelt warning. Very funny. To keep precise speed, I am not using FSD. I am actually using autopilot, which has automatic lane change if you have FSD, which is nice. And that way I can just keep exact precise speed because, well, FSD does not do that. All right, we are turning around, having used just about half the energy, which is crazy because I've driven 65 miles. We are on track for a solid 130 miles. Roughly. We'll see what we actually end with. Elevation could change things up a little bit, but either way, this is going to be nearly record for a Tesla and um, a really impressive feat, for, especially for a, a crossover SUV. We'll get into all that at the end with our final thoughts, but um, yeah, I definitely have thoughts as far as how this Model Y goes. This Model Y is very comfortable, rides super nice, huge improvement over the outgoing model. Um, autopilot is great, but also randomly sucks. It just randomly will go to 45 miles an hour because it's apparently reading some speed limit sign on some on-ramp or off-ramp or something. So that's pretty terrible. Uh, but it, it's fine when it works well. So settling back in here at 81. In general, it's fine. It's just the edge cases where like it sees a random uh, speed limit sign that doesn't belong to this. Uh, it'll freak itself out. So, otherwise, really, really big fan of this. We are routing back to the charger, so it will do some preconditioning. Uh, we'll probably run out or get down to 10% just a hair before the charger, I'm guessing. Um, it said this turnaround point was going to be 31%, but we just got here with 33, now down to 32. So I'm guessing this could go up to close to 9%. Uh, when we actually get back to the charger. Maybe it's guessing we're going faster than we are. Not really sure, but it's, it's just a little bit off on the conservative side. So continue trip. We'll see when it starts preconditioning. I'll let you guys know, but we always precondition back to the charger because that's usually what people do on road trips. Um, they're navigating to the next charging stop, of course. So we're on track to do, yeah, about two hours of driving with 15 minutes of charging, which is really, really impressive. We are blowing past 125 miles and we are getting close to the end. And that's a long road trip. I mean, you know, long leg of a road trip uh, for a quick splash and dash. You know, a lot of people would stop and charge maybe 20, 25 minutes, something like that. So a 15 is pretty impressive to have uh, do another hour and a half between an hour and a half to two hours, depending on your driving situation. But we are just about to pass down to 10%. Holy cow. There we go. 126.3 miles right as we are running out of highway. Couldn't have planned that any better myself. So those are the final stats right there. 34.5 kilowatt hours used in the drive 
little bit of region now, which is, you know, <laughs> might bring us back up to 11, but that's where we hit 10%, which is fantastic. 270-ish watt hours per mile, so not quite four miles per kilowatt hour. I think I was hoping for four miles per kilowatt hour, and I am left slightly uh, below that. Maybe it's 3.8, something like that. So not crazy good efficiency, but probably up there for what we've seen with the 10% challenge. And definitely, I think, probably a new record for SUVs. I'll look at the results and give you guys my final thoughts. That's really funny. It just started preconditioning right after we hit 10%, and we're only about a mile and a half from the charger. Uh, it is about the same elevation, so I don't have to worry about the total of elevation changing, but very funny to see that it just now started preconditioning. All right, plugging right back in, and that's it. Nice little road trip to nowhere, right back where I started. So there we have it, perfect conditions, perfectly executed test all the way down to finishing the run right as the highway ran out of 80 mile an hour capable zones, 126.3 miles. Um, that's a new record for SUVs. As far as I could tell in our 10% challenge past experience, 120 miles is what the Model X Plaid did. Now we've only really run the Plaid versions of S and X, so we need to get a normal long range new Model S update. That'd be awesome to test out. Same with the Model X. And I need to do my car now at a 10% challenge because I think my car could possibly be up there with the best a Tesla can do anyways. Obviously Taycan rips charging like nothing else. Lucid is interesting because it's pretty good but also the charging is so temperamental with that um basically because if you take it to a charger that it can take full advantage of the juice it might then thermal throttle much faster than it would if there was a charger without quite the peak hopefully that made sense it's late i'm tired but 126 miles fantastic number well done with the model y most people would be very happy driving you know realistically not everyone's doing 80 but uh, hour and a half to two hours of driving with 15 minutes of charging. Crazy good.